So please, Amit Gautam, I hope we, you are with us. Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Please go ahead. Okay, great. Yeah, great. Fantastic. First of all, good morning. Um, that's as far as my Swedish goes. Uh, so thanks for having me uh, at the session. I'm, I'm glad to share our perspective. So very briefly, I'm Amit Gautam, CEO and founder of Textile Genesis. We are based out of Hong Kong with our technology development center in uh, Bangalore in India and recently also have presence in London. Now, what's very special about uh, the textile in the, uh, yeah, what's very special about the textile industry is that it's one of the most fragmented sectors. Uh, the top market share of top 10 brands is less than 10%. And if you compare that to automotive sector or consumer electronics, there the market share of top 10 brands is close to 80 to 95%. Now, why is it important? It's important because uh, that indicates the level of fragmentation in the industry. And higher the fragmentation, the more intransparent and more opaque uh, the supply chain becomes. And that is the main reason why transparency and traceability is the biggest issue in fashion and textile industry. If you go, if you go and talk to automotive sector or electronic sector or a lot of other industries, it's not at all a problem, largely because they are relatively concentrated industries they're not as fragmented as fashion and textile, right? And what it also leads to is what we call a 95% traceability gap, uh, which essentially means that top 100 fashion brands, they have set 100% sustainable uh, and traceable fibers target in the next three to five years, but 95% of the same top 100 brands cannot uh, track their garment collections back to fiber origin. So essentially, the entire industry has very little to no visibility. And if that's the state for the top 100 fashion brands, you can imagine what happens uh, in the rest of the industry. And this is the fundamental gap, a very strong vision and ambition of the industry to have sustainable and traceable fibers versus the lack of system technology and processes to deliver uh, on that vision is essentially what we are trying to address at uh, Textile Genesis. And the way we address is through three core innovations, which makes it quite a distinctive platform. And then I will go into the case studies uh, of the work that we have done. So first is FiberCoin technology, which essentially creates a digital token of sustainable fiber at the point of origin. One kg of fiber is one uh, fiber coin, and it can go up to one gram of fiber. Uh, and essentially what, what it does, it controls the amount of certified material entering into the network at the point of origin. So you will never have a situation what happens, for example, in cashmere industry where people say there's twice as much cashmere marketed than physically produced. That's not possible when you actually uh, tokenize the, the sustainable material at the point of origin. The second innovation we, we have done is taken an open standard uh, framework, which is a GS1 traceability protocol and created for the first time for textile industry, a fiber to retail traceability protocol that allows suppliers to seamlessly exchange traceability data with each other, a spinner with a fabric mill, a weaver and knitter, a weaver and knitter with the garment maker, so on and so forth. And then the third important innovation is to be able to connect the digital with the physical world by integrating the result of any of the forensic markers. I think Naja was just talking earlier about DNA markers or pigment markers. Uh, we are marker agnostic. Any of the marker technologies, we could integrate the results uh, as part of the traceability history of the product. Now, let me very briefly share three important work uh, and perspectives from the industry. The first example actually the, uh, started in Sweden with the Changing Markets Foundation uh, publishing a report on dirty fashion in viscose industry about three years ago. And then it was very quickly picked up by Canopy, by Textile Exchange. Uh, and what it led to was that the top uh, brands in the uh, uh, fashion industry made a very public commitment by the CEOs and boards to have sustainable and traceable viscose by uh, 2023. And viscose, by the way, is a fiber that comes from uh, trees uh, from, you know, it should come from sustainable forestry, uh, but there's also quite an intense uh, uh, heavy chemistry are used in the production process, converting the wood pulp 
into the fiber. And that's where the biggest challenge was. Uh, and what it led to was essentially uh, what we see is that uh, in, the, in the textile and fashion industry, essentially you have two distinct classes of fibers are emerging, uh, whether the fiber is sustainable and traceable versus unsustainable and opaque. Uh, so what it means is there's no longer a single recycled polyester market. There's no longer a single cotton market. The question is, is it sustainable and traceable versus unsustainable and opaque? And that's a very clear distinction we see that's uh, coming up uh, in the fashion industry across the board. The second uh, case study I want to share with uh, you is the work that we did with World Economic Forum uh, with lensing and ITC that we showcased earlier this year at the Davos where uh, the fibers from Austrian plant uh, of lensing was tracked all the way to the Hong Kong and the Chinese uh, supply chain. And since then we have uh, worked with uh, four other leading brands, uh, H&M, Armed Angels in Germany, Mara Hoffman in New York, to create an end-to-end -end traceability. The key uh, 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 in this pilot, the key trials was that we wanted to reduce the hurdle rate for suppliers to join the system. So we've designed a system so that it just takes about 60 minutes for a supplier to have a training and then to independently start using the system, right? And that's because the system is on the cloud. Uh, so there is no technology hurdle for supply chain players to use the system because as you know, 80% of the production uh, in the fashion and textile industry is still in Asia. And therefore, we need to reduce the technology hurdle rate from in terms of ability for players to use uh, the system. And uh, so last, uh, basically this year, we tested it in India, in Turkey, uh, Colombia, Nicaragua, uh, all kinds of strange places, Tunisia, Vietnam. And now we're in the process of uh, rolling it out uh, globally. And the third case study is we are working very closely with Textile Exchange, which is uh, an industry standards body, uh, which has close to 200 plus brands as their member. And a large part of the supply chain, they have standard on recycled polyester, on responsible wool, on uh, re uh, essentially on organic cotton. And this is an example, uh, just taking an example from the banking sector, how the banking sector moved from a check that was a physical check to a digital electronic transfer. And that's what we are trying to achieve in the textile industry where right now traceability is done like a bank check through a PDF file, through a paper-based transaction certificate. So it's a very, very manual process for everyone to track uh, the sustainable products across the supply chain. And we are taking that from that PDF and paper-based to a completely electronic and digital system. Uh, and it's the same level of transformation that you see what happened in the banking sector with bank checks to completely digital transactions between the accounts, right? Uh, so in summary, uh, these are our five key uh, learnings from all the work that we have done across uh, with, you know, with independent organizations, with brands, with textile suppliers, with fiber producers, so a lot of work at the grassroots level on the field. Uh, the first important is you have to drive industry-wide engagement. You have to engage the entire industry. You can't just start with a brand or a fiber producer or a certification standard. Whole industry has to be involved. The second, you have to find a way to connect the digital world with the physical world. And this is where our tokenization controls the amount of source of origin and the certified material. And then we can integrate the results from any marker or forensic verification technologies. Third, very important, if you want to scale up the system, it must be easy to use and easy to deploy, especially for a large part of the supply chain, which is fragmented small player space in Asia and South America. So it needs to be uh, as easy to use as possible from design perspective. Fourth, it should be interoperable. You know, there won't be one system that would be actually uh, adopted across the industry. So the system should be flexible to be able to listen and communicate with other external systems uh, that are out there. And third, the flexibility of the system is very important. You know, it cannot be a system that only models cotton or only models recycled polyester. It should be able to model a diverse cross section of uh, textile fibers used from wool to cashmere to man-made cellulosic fibers, which comes from forest to recycled polyester 
uh, of course, cotton, and, and that's quite important. Uh, and that's how we have designed the whole system. So with these sharing of these five uh, key learnings, I would like to now open up for questions and thanks a lot for, yeah, kind hearing. Amit, for uh, this interesting presentation, we will have a great value in these experiences when we move on this day and, and after that. Unfortunately, we, we have to okay. uh, go on without questions because we are a little bit short of time here. I'm, I'm very sorry for that. No problem. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much.